Hello everybody. Today we'll be talking about big cats versus small cats and noticing some physical characteristics of them and why they're different and why that is. The presenters include myself, Alora Cano, Reva Salazar, and Emma Stimson. There are four big cats in the overall Panthera genus, but in this presentation we'll be focusing on two out of those the lion and the jaguar, along with a small cat that not many people know about. Lions are known to be kings of the jungle, though they don't actually live in the jungle. They're mostly found in the savanna. They do earn this title for their strength and how they don't fear other animals, however. That isn't to say they don't have enemies. Hyenas are known to be brave enough sometimes to challenge a lion. Now let's go into a bit more about the information. Commonly referred to as lions, this species name is actually Panthera leo. They belong to the Felidae family. The full-grown males are known to have a muscular and deep-chested body with a rounded head and rounded ears, as you can see. They are, small. they are smaller than a tiger, but bigger than a jaguar and a leopard. The female lion's body is smaller and more agile than the males, but this has to do with their role in the pride. Their responsibilities consist of raising the cubs and hunting. When we look at the female lions, they have a system where they tend to hunt at night because their eyes have adapted to allow them to see in the dark. And they're also known to hunt during storms so that their prey have a harder time to hear and see them. The females have certain roles that they complete, consisting of center and wing. The wings chase the prey towards their centers and allow them to easily execute a hunt. Their physical forms are what make this possible because they are small, agile, and swift. Now the males aren't known for this role. They're known for being protectors. They get into fight with other male lions and they do this to protect the pride. When we look at a key difference between the male and females, we see that the males have a mane. Their mane actually hinders their ability because it can cause overheating during a, during exertion. So a quick question you all can think about, what would, be, what would be the point of them then? Can you tell me if you think it is for protection or do you think it might be for something else? If you're thinking protection, I'm right there with you. That's what I had originally thought. However, we aren't alone in that assumption because a century or two ago, it was theorized by biologists like Charles Darwin, Charles Darwin that lion's manes grew around their neck to protect them from other predators. But it was noticed by field biologists and all their bravery that lions don't actually go for the neck when they're fighting. They attack the rear, their legs, and completely ignore their neck. So then what is the point of the mane that has evolved over the time? Our current theory is to attract the lioness itself. The older they get, the longer and darker the male mane gets. This signifies to the females that the lion's physical abilities are very capable. And it also seems intimidating to male lions because of the length and the color signifying that they have been around quite a while and probably have won many fights with other male lions. Now let's look at how they travel. Lions travel in packs called prides. They consist of one to two males that it can be as small as three or as big as 40. And the females are known to live with the pride that same one they're born into for their whole life. It consists of mothers, daughters, granddaughters, cousins. And um, however, when we look on the other side, males only live with the pride for about two to four years before they're pushed out for the protection against the bigger male lions who will see them as the potential threat. When we look at how they roar, they actually roar together. They, even the cubs join in, granted they're soft mews, but it usually lasts around 40 seconds, but even that short time can be heard up to five miles away. They do this in order to mark their territory in the case that there are any predators nearby. Now I'm gonna pass it over to my co-presenter, Reva, so that she can introduce you to the Jaguar. Okay, so my name is Reva Salazar. The second cat that we're gonna be talking about today are Jaguars. Jaguars are the third largest cat in the world. Um, this species has the largest population in the Amazon of South America. Their lifespan is about 12 to 15 years. They're carnivores that eat animals like 
deer, peccaries, and capybaras. Unlike other cats, jaguars do not avoid water. They're excellent swimmers, which gives them the access to other prey such as fish, turtles, and caimans. These cats have a very strong bite force and are actually able to take down their prey in a single bite. The scientific name for jaguars is Panthera onca. These cats often get confused with leopards to the untrained eye. Both have what are called rosettes. These are the black circles on their fur that look like roses. However, a noticeable difference between the two species is that jaguars have smaller black spots within these circles, as you can see in the middle figure. Both males and females roar. This sound can be used to bring them together when they mate. When greeting or reassuring one another, they make a nasally stuffing noise to make themselves seem unintimidating. Male and female jaguars look very much alike. Females can weigh up to 200 pounds and have noticeable smaller heads than males. Females are the caretakers of the jaguars. They carry their babies for about 100 days, which is a little over three months. Jaguars normally give birth to a single cub but can have up to four at one time. These mothers take care of their young and teach them how to hunt for about two years until they're able to go off on their own. Males can weigh up to 250 pounds and have a larger, more prominent head than females. Male jaguars are very independent and spend most of their lives alone. The black-footed cat belongs to the Felis genus, meaning it is more closely related to a common house cat than, say, a lion or a jaguar. However, don't let that fool you. These little guys are native to the dry climate of South Africa, and they have earned the title of Africa's deadliest wildcat. Probably thinking, how did a cat so small earn the title of Africa's deadliest wildcat? And I can't blame you. These little guys are really small. Females rarely go over four pounds, and males rarely go over six pounds, which is on par with, if not lighter than, the typical house cat. However, these cats require a lot more food. One cat can eat anywhere between nine and 11 ounces of food a night, which is about one sixth of their average body weight. Females typically stick to mice to avoid competition with males during kidding season. Males typically eat birds, mice, and rabbits. Legend has it that these cats were seen taking down a giraffe, but these claims have yet to be seen in the modern era. Something neat about the black-footed cat, and actually what they're most famous for, is their ability to jump really high. Adults can jump five feet in the air vertically and seven feet horizontally in one leap. That being said though, they're really poor climbers. They simply don't have the body shape nor the tail length to climb trees safely. Thus, the black-footed cat makes its home in abandoned termite mounds. This also helps them to escape the hot African heat. There are threatened species and their population size is decreasing. This is due to a lot of factors. However, the main factor is human impacts like pollution from farming and laying predator traps. Now it's time to play Name That Cat. Name That Cat is a game we've made for you all to test your skills at identifying each of the species we've covered today. The rules are as follows. We will play an audio clip of one of the cats we have shown you today, and you will have to guess which cat it belongs to. Best of luck! So now that we know the rules, let's go ahead and play the game. Let's start with sound A. So that's sound A, think about what you think it is, and let's go to sound B. So again, think about that one, and we're moving on to sound C. So, 
Which one do you think it is? You can start answering, and then I'll go ahead and tell you here. A was actually our lion. B was our jaguar being threatened. And C was a warning from our black-footed cat. <laughs> Mm-hmm.